Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Well, welcome to beautiful Panama. I am a little late today, live. If you're listening in the future, that really doesn't matter to you. Which most of you do. So hi. Uh, hi, 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 hi. Wow. So my goodness. So I called this week's episode, the tools I've used to change money for me. And my goodness, you caught me on a day where I'm actually choosing the joy of living. Well, it's terrible. I'm so happy. Stop it. And we are in beautiful Bihau, Panama. We're actually looking at creating a home here. And I'm so glad to see you guys. Hi, guys. Hi, Nina. Hi, Sonal. The tools that I've used to change money for me. So, wow. And you know what? I was going to be all organized and I was going to take notes and fuck it. We're just going to do this off the cuff today. <sighs> Hi, Rita. First of all, if you guys haven't joined the infinitebeingschool.com, you got to go there. Like, it's awesome. There's, It's free for you. There's a back to basics introduction to the access consciousness tools in there that isn't an intro at all. It's actually incredibly advanced. And we have a Telegram chat that I go live in every day. And it's just a fucking gift. So if you guys haven't signed up for infinitebeingschool.com, please go there. Um, and, and so let's dive into the content. Money for me has always been this place where I, for a long, long time, before access consciousness and even up to when I found access consciousness, money was this place where I didn't know how to get access to the choices I had beyond what I was currently creating. And so I've had different phases where I had to ask different things of myself in order for it to show up different. And that's simply put. So the first phase, and, and actually in this first phase, I want to invite you to Simone Millicis and Christopher Hughes money call. Um, it's money. Are you choosing it is what it's called. And you can find it on Simone's website. But the very first time that I chose money, I was looking at a way of living that I didn't know how to create. I wanted to be able to travel and go to any access class I chose to have and be able to create income from anywhere in the world. And I didn't want to be tied to a job. Those were the three things that I knew, literally. And so I started pulling on people around me, you know, and I was a new access consciousness facilitator. So I had some facilitator friends and I was like, how do you do this? Like, how does this work? And all of them, hundred percent of them said, well, you just choose it. That's an annoying response for somebody that has no idea how that works. And I was like, you just choose it. And for me at that point, you had to have money in order to choose something. That's the way that my whole real I built my reality around that. You don't choose something until you have money. What they were telling me was the opposite, that you choose something and then the money shows up. So I was like, okay, I choose it. You know how when you're first starting to choose, it just sort of, it's like a, I don't even know. It's like a two-year-old starting to learn how to talk. You just bash around and you sort of play with it. And I was like, okay, I choose it. But the one thing that was so loud in my world is that I wasn't willing to live without these access classes. Like there were certain elements of what I was choosing that I wasn't willing to live without. And so that's really what guided me through this whole thing that I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to choose money, but I knew that I wasn't willing to live without going to access classes. And I'm telling you this because in your life, you really have to look, look at what you're not willing to live without. I see a lot of us that are willing to live without money. It's like, well, if all else fails, I'll just survive. Or if all else fails, I just will fill in the blank. If you have an if all else fails, I'll just fill in the blank, then you've left your back door wide open to anything else that could show up. But if in your world there's just like no fucking way you're living without this thing, then you'll have it. And that's how that works. So I didn't know that. So I chose it. And I, and I just started. And that's the thing about when you're choosing to create beyond where you've created before, which is how money shows up, by the way. 
money shows up when you're willing to create beyond where you're created before. That's it. It's no big secret. Um, so whether it's going and traveling to more access classes or it's living somewhere you haven't lived before or having a way of living you haven't had before, that's how money shows up. It doesn't show up the other way around. And actually, I just saw a quote by Gary Douglas that I'm going to butcher. But essentially, he said, you know, um, your business can grow from the amount you're willing to live and create your living. So your business brings money. Money shows up from where you're willing to live. So if you're looking at having more money, are you actually living the way that you want to be living? As you can see, we're here again in Bihau. Um, we come up sporadically now and we're looking at creating this as a way of living. It's very different. There's a very different rhythm here with the ocean and the sand and the, and the pools everywhere. Like we want to do different things. Our bodies want different things. And yet there's so much space, so much of that sense of freedom, so much of that nurturing and, and spaciousness that comes from being on the ocean. Um, I've asked recently to add horses to my life. And so I've looked and 20 minutes away, there's horses. So we're choosing a way of living that's very different than what we've chosen before. And that's what's going to instigate the money for it showing up. So that's one of my secrets is choosing the way of living that instigates money showing up. The second thing that I have chosen, the second tool, the second choice that I made that changed money for me was I chose to have it. Probably um, in, I mean, in choosing to live in a particular way, you're choosing to have it. However, I will say, I was still doing epic hand to mouth. So the second tool that I used that really changed money for me was choosing to accumulate it, like actually have it. And I had to do, Access Consciousness talks about setting up your 10% account where you take 10% of all the money and you like put it aside in, a, in an account and you never spend it. That's a thing. And when I started that, that started to change things for me. I had to take that like five steps further and go into a book called Profit First and actually um, organize my finances and all the revenue that was coming in in a way that I could support taxes and my 10% and a future account and all these other things for a while until I got to the point where I looked at my bank accounts and I'm like, oh, I have money. And that's probably the second choice that has changed money the most dynamically for me was choosing to have it. Not even just choosing to accumulate it in my 10% and like let that grow. And then because I would use that money and I would actually invest it in jewelry, which for a while really created for me. Um, with your 10% account, it's not for spending. It's not, it's not even for spending on jewelry. It's actually for having. And you can use it on things that, that contribute to that sense of money in your world. So for a while, I used it on investing in hard currency, basically, which, is, which was jewelry. So I, I would accumulate it and then I would invest it into some jewelry and I would wear that and that was like having my 10% on me. But after a while, even that stopped working. And what I mean by that is like, it wasn't creating as much to have the money out of my account as it was to have it in my account. So like a year and a half ago or longer, I made a different demand. And I was like, no matter what it takes, I'm not investing in jewelry. I'm not spending it on anything. I'm like, I'm having it. I'm actually going to let this accumulate in my bank account until it reaches a point where something tips for me because it hadn't tipped. Like I'd heard this 10% story where if you allow it, you take 10% of everything that you own and you allow it to accumulate and you just at some point it will reach an amount where you feel like you have money. And I'd heard that from so many people and I wasn't having that same thing, but I wasn't allowing to, it to accumulate. I was, you know, spending it on jewelry. So I made a different demand and I said, no matter what it takes, I'm going to put aside 10% of everything I bring in and I'm going to let it accumulate until I, until it tips for me, until I feel like I have money. And not only that, of course, cause I'm extreme, I'm going to put, a, I'm going to actually have a 10% account for my business and I'm going to set aside 10% of every single dollar that comes in from my business into that business 10%. And I'm going to have two 10%, which I had been resisting for as long as I can remember. And Gary said, if you set aside 10% of 
from your business and you put 10% in there, then you'll, your business will always grow. Never done it. Did that. Probably eight months later, when I actually allowed that to accumulate, we went on a trip to Cancun and I didn't have a lot of like floating cash to the, for that trip, but I had like enough that we could get through it. But we hit a certain point in that trip where the cash was kind of running low, at least the cash that I'd set aside to go on the trip. And I started to go into that familiar panic and it simply wasn't there anymore. And I was like, okay, cool. What's changed? And I looked at my bank accounts and I was like, I have money. We have money. I don't actually have to worry about the fact that I don't have money in this account. I have money in this account and in this account and in this account and in this account. And something flipped inside of me and it changed forever. Just like they said it would. So that was probably my second thing that I've chose that changed money for me was actually honoring myself and taking 10% of every single thing that came in and putting it in that account and letting it accumulate. The third thing that I chose that changed money for me forever was I committed to going through the How to Become Money Workbook. Now, I just hosted a class for Christopher Hughes called The Seven Figure Side Hustle, which was probably one of the best business and money classes that I've ever taken so far. He was able to create himself into being a millionaire without ever going through that How to Become Money Workbook, which I'm really impressed by, but I couldn't do that. I had been a facilitator, a certified facilitator for probably three years when, and I was still struggling. I was doing the same financial reality on this level as I was at this level. It was exactly the same way. It just had more money in it. And we had just moved in at that time into a huge house in Vancouver with, I was moved in with a couple of other access facilitators and we were creating this like access fantasy life or whatever. And I was downstairs in my room in the basement running out of money. And it was super embarrassing because I'd like made this big deal about the fact that I had, you know, just moved into this massive house. I was flaunting my lifestyle left, right and center. I was uh, just, yeah, going after how big a deal this was. And in reality, what was happening was I was not creating money. And I remember having a really like, come to Jesus moment about it. Um, I actually went into a lot of trauma and drama about it, if I'm honest, and laid back on my bed and I was like considering dying. And I was just, I, I was like three months of just really intense upset about what was happening with money for me. And like it always happens for me or like I create it, I woke up one morning, it was especially intense. And I went to the bathroom and was getting ready. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, I am either going to continue struggling with this or I'm going to change this right now. And I made a different demand of myself and realized that the one thing I had never done to truly transform my financial reality was go through the how to become money workbook. Now I am, as I've said a million times, super extreme. So I went through that workbook every single week, which, and, and in total, like I actually read through the entire workbook. I facilitated through the entire workbook. It takes four hours to go through that whole workbook for like eight weeks, every single week with a bunch of other people. And I think I charged them like 20 bucks to come with me. So it was nothing. And after eight weeks of facilitating that workbook and allowing it to change my space and using the tools in that workbook, I actually, at the end of that eight weeks, I finally had access to a space that I could actually choose from that was different. Now, I know that these money tools are tools that I've talked about before. And it's because those are the tools that I've used to change everything. And the truth is that they're too simple and they're too easy. And all they require of you is to commit to them and do them. And when I look at the things that I've never changed in my life before, it's because the choices that I need to make to change those things are too simple and too easy. 
And so I just don't do them. I know that at some point I will get bored enough or irritated enough or frustrated enough with myself that I'll choose them, but I'm not there yet. So I just don't choose them. But I think if I were going to, you know, instigate a different money conversation in your world, it would be like, is what you're living now enough for you? I'm in a really unique position in my life right now. I, I have, by everyone's standards, I have enough. I don't need more. But more is my middle name. And if I'm not doing more, I'm not doing me. So, like I've been looking at recently, you know, okay, cool. I've got a multi six figure business. That's more than most people ever create. So I could stop here. I could just coast, which by the way, is not really true, but the stories we tell ourselves, right? Like I could like, I could be happy here, but it's not about being happy by everybody else's standards. Money is not about being happy by everyone else's standards. It's about choosing what life worth living is for you. And what life worth living is for me now is so far beyond what I've chosen before. The conversations I'm looking at in my world are what does it take to live and function out of control? What does it take to live and function as total receiving? You can't go anywhere and have a conversation with anybody about that. That's not what anybody's looking at, but it's what's interesting to me. As, as I'm looking at my business and, and what money is in my world, I'm like, okay, so I accomplished all the things I set out to accomplish, which by the way, is what is true for you. You accomplish everything you set out to accomplish. So for me, I'm looking at back and going, okay, cool. Like I've accomplished everything I set out to accomplish. I'm living in another country. I've got more money than I've ever had before. I, the business is good. And according to this reality, that should be enough for me. And it's not. Why? Because the world's not different yet. The world hasn't changed. I'm not satisfied. There's not enough exposure to these tools from my point of view. And that's all just my point of view. So I've got to look at what makes life worth living for me. What's enough, not even enough for me. What's the more I keep seeking? What is that for me? If you are only looking ever at money from the point of view of surviving your life, you will only ever create survival. If you begin looking at living, what living is for you. And, and about a year ago, I started asking, what is living for me? Universe, will you show me what living is for me? If you start committing yourself to living, then money can show up for you. So we're in the process right now of having moved to Panama and going through that whole thing and living in the city. Uh, we're in the process of exploring outside the city, as you can see. This is beyond anything I ever would have imagined was possible. It's everything I was asking for showing up in a totally different way. And we only got here because I was willing to go, okay, cool. Like, yeah, I'll choose that. That matches the energy of what I want my life to be. Do I have any idea? No. Am I willing? Yes. And so this choice is leading us forward into all of these aspects of living that you could not orchestrate from a structure to save your life. And that's how money shows up, is from what you're willing to live and be. So I would ask you to look at a few things today, like what's going to actually create money in your world? Have you chosen it? Have you made a different demand of yourself? Have you studied and, and created a different platform internally from which to create from? Have you allowed yourself to actually live? Or are you just surviving? 
what is living for you. And if you're ready to like totally transform where you're functioning from, I happen to have a membership starting this week. Show me the money, honey. CrystalJoyCrawford.com slash show me the money. My target with that membership was to create a space where you could change your story, where you could become the hero. I'll tell you one last story about this. Um, and I've had many pivotal moments where money has changed for me. It's not been like a steady journey to the top, whatever the top is. Um, there was another moment where I was again in that epic. I was still going through that roller coaster, you know, like, so I did the how to become money workbook. I started generating more money than I ever had before, but I hadn't educated myself on like financial systems or, you know, how to organize myself in a way that actually allowed money to flow, um, in a way that works. Right. Because there's a lot to educate yourself about money. There's the government systems and your own personal systems and then bookkeeping, bookkeeping systems and accounting systems and what money really is in the world and what you've decided it is. And there's, there's a whole education that none of us are given. So I had gotten to another point where I had created enough to get myself into my own apartment again. And I was taking care of myself and I was, you know, business was working and all that. But I was still bringing in money and spending it every month and, you know, that whole thing. So when you hit those pockets, what's going to start to occur is different questions will arise in your world. Like you will become a need, a need that will end up tugging into your world, these different conversations. So I was like, I knew I needed something, but I didn't know what it was. And a friend of mine that I was in contact with said, hey, you might want to check out this book. It was called Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. And I was like, yes, I wrote it down and I went on Amazon and I bought it and I started to read it and I was like, oh my God, he's talking about me. And of course, like I do, like you do when you're a human or you don't read it all the way through. So I started flipping through it. I'm like, where's the salient information? And I found the part where he's like, here's what you got to do to assess your situation and put it in a new system. So I looked at all that and I was like, oh my God, like he's going to make me look at everything, right? Like he's going to make me get present with all my numbers and of course, the very thing that I was avoiding. But as I read his book, I, I knew, I just knew that if I didn't change something about the way I was functioning with revenue, that it was never going to change. I knew if I didn't choose something different, it was never going to change. So I did it. I took what he said in the book and I did it. And the first step is to assess. And the second step is to start instituting banking systems where you simply handle your revenue different. Up to that moment, I had never seen the money that my business brought in as revenue. I had always seen it as my money. But it wasn't my money. It was the business's money. So I started handling it like it was business money. There've been two times in my whole business career that I've been more freaked out than three, more freaked out than I've ever been before. That was number one. I thought for sure if I started handling my business revenue differently that I was going to go broke and I would never have anything and I was gonna die, basically. I didn't, I had, a, I had an uncomfortable month where as I was instituting the systems, I had less fluid cash than I was used to having because I was being diligent persistent, consistent. I was actually adhering to a system rather than just willy nillying my money away. It was uncomfortable for about a month and a half. And then after that, it got easier. And then it got easier. And then it got easier. And I was like, oh my God, if I simply don't ever give up on this system, I'm going to have more money than I know what to do with. I created that. And it was so interesting because about two and a half years later, I told a bunch of my friends about this book at the time. I instituted the systems that he talked about. And about two and a half years later, I was having a private session with somebody who, who had bought a package of session, sessions from me. And she was having a session about money. And I was like, you know, have you read Profit First? And she's like, you know, you told me about that book and I never did anything about it. And... Um, and I said, well, it's interesting because two and a half years later, I have money and you don't. And that was the only difference. 
is I had been willing to make choices I hadn't made before. And she just hadn't made those choices, which was fine because she could make them now or any other choice and change what was showing up. But it illustrated to me so dynamically, like the choices we make create the future we're going to have. The choice you make today creates the future you're going to have tomorrow. So what can you choose? What choices can you make that will actually change what you're creating with money forever? I will never be who I was before. I always get to be greater than I was yesterday, mostly because that's what I always choose. And I've created this where I am now from the choices I made yesterday. And now I'm looking at today, which choices can I make today to have a totally different future tomorrow? If you don't take up the power of who you truly are and claim that you're the source of what shows up now and the source of what can show up in the future, then you don't get to have that pleasure. But if you're willing now to be uncomfortable and study and transform and commit and choose the things that will create a greater future, then you can have that. And it won't be because you chose my program or anyone else's program, although what a gift. It'll be because you chose it. Because you looked at your life and your future and you were like, I don't care what it takes. I'm not living this stupid anymore. So if crystaldraycrawford.com slash show me the money would contribute, it's here. We're doing it. What can I contribute to you?